Hey, and anyhow, we're going to, uh, my name, I'll give you my name first, Dick Ensley, and I live in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. But what we're going to do today, we're going to do a little oil painting, but we're going to do it in steps. I'm going to show you different stages. The painting has to go through stages. And one of the free art lessons we talked about was organize and plan your composition. Okay, so we've done that already. And this is the composition that you see here is the one we're going to paint. But we're going to do it in stages. First thing I'm going to do basically, and I've already done basically a, a value sketch of it. We're going to leave that alone. But I'm going to take and show you how to go through the stages of oil painting. Now I've got a book I've written called Painting the Illusion. I go through all those steps. But out here we're going to show you some of the some of the ways that you can do it and cut some of your time and, and learn how to paint. First thing I do, I, I've already laid out the composition. I've got it here. This is pretty much, this is over in Townsend, North Car uh, Townsend, uh, Tennessee, just as, as you approach the Great Smoky Mountains. It's a beautiful scene today. But what we're going to do here, and I'm going to do a, uh, basically a value sketch in one color. When I go out to paint landscape plain air, I basically use cerulean to sketch. So let's start that. And these paints I'm using are very fluidy. They're, they've got beautiful uh, color. They're basically the Charbon. They work, they're excellent paints. They hold their, their color. When they dry, they're very similar to what you see right here. Okay. Now I use these, use a, I lo like the long, long bristles on my brush, okay? They're called the, the flats. And they have the long, don't get the shorter ones because they're going to wear down the short. But get as long as you can. And you get a nice chisel edge on these, okay? Now when you first start sketching, do what I call just just gestural things. Look at it. Look for your horizon, which is right about here. Very lightly draw it in. Even if you're just pretending you're drawing it in in your mind, play with the canvas a little bit. Don't make you don't make a statement until you're ready. And then when you do, do it very lightly. Look for shapes. Look at the shapes here. This barn falls in a triangular shape. Okay. Then there's rectangular shapes within that. Then there's another rectangular shape here. There's another rectangular shape here. These are all rectangles here. Look at the clouds here. You got rectangle here. You got a, a, a I mean a rectangle. You got a triangle here. You've got ovals here. So all these shapes. And what you're looking for is shapes, okay? And I like to use this color because this color, especially in the summertime, blends with every color that you see in summer, with the greens, with the blues, with the yellows. Okay. Now, basically, I want to place this. Put the center. Now, this is called what you call a geometric center right here. Don't ever place anything geometrically in the center. Put it to the left or to, to the right. It's much more interesting. It's called a visual center. This barn here, you wouldn't want to put that barn right in the center. It would be very boring. Put it off to the left right over here. Right about there, okay? So you have to draw a little triangle first. And then put, put your shapes into the triangle, okay? Watch your perspective. Okay? And all of a sudden, before you know it, you'll have this composition drawn on there. Now, we're going to do this rapid. I would spend, if I was out painting in the morning, especially early in the morning, I paint about 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the summer. I might take an hour just on this step. Because if you'll take your time on these steps, the rest of it goes a lot easier. Much quicker. Now there's a difference between an artist and a painter. A painter paints, an artist draws. But you should have some drawing skills. Don't neglect that. See this goes down. Now look, here's a triangular right here. This whole field here is all in a triangular shape. Right about there. Then let's start here in the top. Look at the look at the tree lines back here, okay? Follow follow the lines. Follow the lines. You know the old thing, follow the money, you'll find out where it goes. Well follow the lines here. Now, your composition, a good composition, will fall within a triangular shape, too. You've got a triangular shape here. You've got one here. So you've got one cutting across the other one. 
just keep this one a little bit lower here. And this one we'll put way up here. We'll make this even a little higher than it is. Let's draw it in. Very lightly. As you get into it where it gets dark, if it gets dark, go a little darker. I like these. These are the uh, Pro Stroke brushes. Very nice. They wear good, especially the way I paint. I do a lot of scumbling. You'll, you'll like the way they they hold up. Barn's got that barn. These old barns, all the roofs have gotten crooked and different angles. But you still need a little bit of perspective to show those here. And if you, you can't figure out the angle, these are called planes, not airplanes that fly. These are planes. This, that's a plane. That angle there, there's the angle. Now look at how the angle changes here. Okay, see? The angle here. See? Use your brush for that. I tell you, these little uh, free lessons online, I've watched several of them from friends of mine, and I tell you what, they're wonderful things. You can learn a lot from them. Okay? Let's take a little bit bigger brush here. We've got enough information here. Let's just kind of scumble in some some values. Okay, we're going to do basically a value sketch here. Okay, let's take a little bit heavier brush. Okay. And now we're paint dry. I'm not using any turps right now. Okay. We'll do that when we get into the color so we can change our color. But right now we're just painting. Now let's scumble in some dark. See where the darks are? Take the side of your brush, scumble. This is called scumbling. It's a nice technique. Puts in the values for you. But don't skip around. Follow, follow the way it goes. Follow the lights. Follow the, the darks, the middles, the lights. Okay. These brushes get better as they get worn a little bit. Now that line there, that I will probably bring that line, that light, it's called backlight, down just a little bit below that that ridge there for composition sake. And this is choices that you have to make when you go out to paint. You know, if you don't like a tree there, take it out. A painting starts out very mechanical. There's a lot of, a lot of. Uh, Study that's got to go into it, but then you end up in the creative part of it. There's a there's a certain kind of rhythm that'll start in your painting as you get into it. And even in this, now I enjoy going through these steps here. Okay, I could sit and do these forever, and I'll show you how to do a tonal painting here in a little while. Bring that way up here. These paints are very nice to use. They're, they they go on nice. That they uh, paint just as well as they do when you're doing this. Like I said, this is called a tonal or, or a value sketch, rather, basically putting in values, darks, middles, and lights. Keep in mind what 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 do values do? Values establish the form of the object. So a value shows you what it looks like. Intensity goes back and it comes forward. It's called color perspective. If it goes less intense, it goes forward to the back. If it comes more intense, it comes forward. Dark, 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 dark. Let's get into this barn a little bit here. Take a little smaller, the smaller brush. You just kind of get in here. Whoops, I won't get too much paint on there first. I'm going to show you how to go through this. We'll do this in stages. Okay, and there's a shadow that comes down through here. And we talked about shadows. Shadows are always a complement of whatever color that. Say the barn is red, it, you'll see a, a, it'll cast a green shadow, but when it mixes with another color, it's going to more likely gray. So. 
get into those clouds just a little bit here. Some of that color that in the background. See all this beautiful cerulean color. Just didn't do this in one color right now. Get those mountains in the background here. Let's put them in quickly. I don't know about you guys out there, but I'm having fun with this. And I'll tell you what, this, these different steps of painting, you can enjoy them and have a whole lot of fun with them. Yeah, I brought this down a little bit past the roof of that barn, too. These darks. Okay. Let's go a little bit further than this. I want to show you real quickly before we stop this, and we'll continue. You want to see what white really looks like. Here's this is a permalba white I'm using here. I also use a sharpen, but I like the permalba and the, the two. But here's what white. See how white that is? Let's put a little bit of that, just to put a little bit in, into the clouds here. See how much whiter it is in the canvas? Brings up the value of the canvas just a little bit here. So you can go a little bit into here and bring that color down a little bit. We have one little area that I kind of missed here, this little spot right in here, this little light spot. See it right in there? This little spot. I just put it back in there. And this here basically comes down past our roof line, so that's got to be light right through there. Okay. Now, let me show you one thing. Just before we stop this, we're going to do a real, just a, a reconstruction. I'm going to do it just on the barn to show you what happens. Mix yourself in a, a very dark color, say an ultramarine in alizarin and go in here wherever you see it where it's dark go dark and watch what's going to happen here dark dark okay so it's not quite as dark back there Not here a little bit dark in there go down not quite as dark here up here very dark here come down see what's happening this is called reconstruction I missed this a little bit. See, this has got to come over here. So this is when you reconstruct your your something you miss. You, you always get a chance to go back on your paintings. You never lost, never lost in them. Okay. But you do this to the whole painting. I'm just doing it in this one little spot just to show you what happens. Just to give you an idea. And this this did your reflection. Your mountain this background comes right about here. Comes down through here. Comes in here. Okay. So this is called a uh, just a value darks, middles, and lights. Okay, we'll get into the color in another another ser series, but uh, right now we'll leave it at this. Here again, my name is Dick Ensing. You can look me up at my website, DickEnsingArtist.com. Write me for any questions. I answer all the questions. If you have any problems or you want to know something about a step, it's Dick Ensing at BellSouth.net. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. going to show you how to sign a painting today. My name is Dick Ensley. I'm a Tennessee artist. I live in, of course, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, near the Gray Smoky Mountains. We have one painting I'm going to show you. I've already, we've gone through the process. I showed you the finished painting. It's dried now. I'm going to show you, we've already gone through the process how to paint that picture. It's already been scanned. I'm getting ready to make prints of it later, but I'm going to show you how to sign it now. Now's the time you can sign it. And this picture is right over here, and you have to pick out a color. You've got to pick out a place to put your signature. Now, I get this question all the time. How do I sign my picture? One thing you don't do on a picture is you don't put a title on a picture. Galleries will not take it with a title. It looks more like a poster then. So we're going to sign it. So pick out a color. Well, what do you want to sign it with? First of all, you need a good brush. You can use a nice pointed. I, I like the flats. I get a nice, nice chisel edge on these flats. You have to use a little turps in it so it, it makes the paint very loose. 
pick out a color. Pick where you're going to leave. Okay, would you sign it here? Well, if you sign it here, it shows it off balance, okay? A picture has to be balanced. If you put a picture into a, uh, uh, a show or something, one of the things is that if it's matted, they look at the matting. If it's framed, they look at the framing. The whole thing has to complement each other. And the signature also. The signature has to go along with the painting. So let's pick out a nice little place. Well, how about right here in the middle? No, you don't want to put it in the middle. Right about here is where, where it would be balanced very nicely. What color are you going to use? Well, I like red painting. A lot of the paintings are signed in red, blue, depending on what you like. Let's just pick out a nice, uh, this is kind of a, a cadmium red. Add a little bit of turfs to it, not much, just to make it very fluidy. Now, when you sign your painting, you're going to have to hold your, your arm like this or something, or something to rest it on. Now, I have practiced, and a lot of artists have practiced my signature. You want it to look neat, okay? Uh, go through a process of uh, study of, of signatures and look, see how people sign their paintings. Some are very sloppy, some of them are neat, some of them are just great, great uh, ways to sign it. Let's just sign it here with red. And don't sign it in, in cursive, sign it in, in, in straight up and down. Don't sign it in cursive like you're writing your name. That's another thing that a lot of galleries look, look at. This painting is already for sale. Somebody wants to buy it, but prints, if you make prints, you'll make a whole lot of money in prints. Uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, there you go. We've got two. We're going to sign another painting this year. We're going to sign that one. Okay. Okay. This is the way I sign my name. Okay. Now, we've got another painting here. What, where are we going to sign? Well, here again, you don't, here's the bar. You don't want to put your thickness right so here. It'll off balance it. Let's put it again right over here in the corner. Let's pick out a different, let's pick out a blue maybe. Uh, maybe a deep, either a cobalt or a lizard or a um, ultramarine blue. Here again, you may have to add just a little bit of turps to it just to get it so it's very fluid. Okay, here again, just move this one aside. Just hold your arm here, we'll sign this one. Signatures are very important on your paintings. The first thing that people look for is your signature. You have no idea how many students have asked me, how do I sign, when do I sign, where do I sign? Well, this gives you an idea how to do it. One of my students, she signed her picture, and I won't give her your name, but she was signing someone in, cur in uh, cursive. She went to a gallery, and they said, no, we won't take it with a title. Or we, we'd like to see your signature signed in just a nice print. There you go. Okay. That shows you how to sign your painting. Uh, well, again, welcome to my studio, and thanks for dropping in. My name is Dick Ensing. Look me up on my internet or on the website.